folks. First time's the charm. Here we are, Local GI episode 34 for the 26th of August, 2021. Joining me is Ian Gibson. Uh, it's just lovely to be here. I will be out next week, so you're going to go two weeks without an episode of Local Chat. Uh, we'll be back later. <laughs> I hate you so much. Also just joining that us gym early. <laughs> is the man in the tank top. It's Kyle Bailey. It's true. I, I have UV lights installed in these, uh, so I'm trying to work on my tank. <laughs> I, was, oh. I was believing you for a second. I was like, that's, that's really a thing. smart. That's a thing. Streamers would be so tan. Like, insanely tan. Oh, I, um... Yeah. That's that like crazy. Elgato add-on? Oh, Elgato skincare? I'd buy Elgato. <laughs> there was, um... So, the company I used to work for, uh, we needed, like... I used the Stream Deck for it. Or not Stream Deck, sorry. Up Deck for it. Mm. But, um... An Elgato Stream Deck for OBS was required. Like, some people liked using it. And they were posting... The 32 key one was $100 for an Amazon deal. For, like... That's not bad. Ten that's, minutes before isn't it's that sold normally out. like two forty five normally. Yeah, that's crazy. And yeah. I was like, I would have bought it for a hundred dollars. Oh yeah. Uh, I will <sighs> say the one nice thing about the stream deck. I've made an entire video about how much I love up deck because it's free. Great thing about the stream deck though is that some of their macros directly tie into Twitch. Like mm. for example, we'll talk about the story later, all the hate raids going on on Twitch. I saw somebody who made a panic button on their stream deck and it literally was just like it was like set twitch to private clear the chat set it to sub only turn off my stream alarms like literally just a panic button when you get rid of <laughs> wow. hate so you can just literally block all that in the stream and just keep going that's pretty, pretty smart cool. that's that actually is pretty smart and it's it's funny because i mentioned that during my stream yesterday because for the first time ever i used the lgbtqia plus which is a really long thing to say for a tag. Um, did we get rated? Did we get rated? We, we did not. Although I did have, at one Damn point, it. like a <sighs> ton of people were watching and commenting. It was really positive. It was great. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, so I'm going to I'm gonna use that tag to our advantage. Get us some, get us some cool and, people. You know, I, I just want to be clear. I'm I'm joking. I don't want you to get rated. But if you did get rated, it would boost our numbers. I, if you I, could just honestly, take the, I, and the hate for a bit, you know. I'm not, really even, not even joking. I was like, I kind of want to get rated just so that yeah. I can be like, Wow, like I matter to someone. <laughs> I matter to someone hates yeah. me. And um, then you clip, and then you clip your reaction. We put it on TikTok with exactly. the LGBTQIA tag, yep. and it goes viral. As look at this, look at this proud, strong streamer facing the hate people. We can do this. Do you know if we can get in contact with the hate rate people and just like give them hints on who they should target next? Just, <laughs> just, yeah. just look in, uh, <laughs> just look in Alana's tweet responses or whatever Alana yeah <laughs> oh yeah just look there that's true this is all terrible but we are desperate for any we're sort of traction please, we please, really could use some subs please. we're blowing please up on parlor um i um, i did get a bunch of, i did get a bunch of cool followers yesterday so oh, that's good cool. i saw i saw some of the emails i was gonna say every wednesday night i get that email that subpixel is now live or you are now live, and I always half panic, being like, "Am I missing a stream?" And I was like, "Oh, Kyle's streaming." <laughs> it's, it's just Kyle. Don't worry. About I was it. like, "Oh God!" And then I laugh maniacally and throw the phone against the wall and buy a new one. I used to, I used to always think back when we used um, like restream for everything. Uh, I used to always worry that I would accidentally be testing something while you guys were live, and I would just <laughs> go live via restream. So I was like, oh, that was yeah. always just made me so worried. Um, but yeah, we don't, we don't have that worry anymore. No. Um, nice. I, I had a segment for the beginning, but that was a pretty good segment for the beginning. So I'm just going to move on. Uh, folks, we got plenty of gaming content to talk about, but first we got to talk about what we have been playing. And it looks like Ian's been playing a little game that is called Real Life. Ian, do you want to talk about Real That's Life? That's right. This past weekend, we shot a fresh episode of Pixelate, our travel camcorder show at the Pennsylvania Renaissance Fair with one Wilbur's Crispers special guest, Karen and Maggie. I had a lot of fun. Do you have a lot of fun, Will? It was a good time. Yes. Yeah. It's my first time at the PA Ren Fair. I've been to the Maryland Ren Fair three times. Kyle, you ever been to a, a Ren Fair? Um, I've been to Medieval Times. Oh, not even close. Honestly, yeah. <laughs> it's worth it. <laughs> Actually, you're not that far from, well, I don't know. So my, I don't know if my friend a good Jersey one. 
my friend Jimmy uh, goes to a Ren Fair, I think in PA, and I think there's a couple in New Jersey that he's been to. He goes to, he does all like cosplay stuff, and he's invited yeah. me in the past couple of years, and I just have never been able to make it because of work or or I was just mm -hmm. busy. So I do want to go at some points, but tell me, tell me how this one was because I'm really interested. It's like just to set the scene. All right, I don't know about you guys, but before I ever went to a Ren Fair, all I had was like the TV portrayal of it, which is basically just like a field filled with temporary tents and people in costume you know mm -hmm. like that was pretty much it but honestly the two that i've been to the maryland and the pennsylvania one they're they're i don't want to say they're permanent but they have permanent structures like they literally just build a full medieval village with permanent structures and everything in the middle of a forest somewhere and you're just in a medieval village they have all these actors running around they have all sorts of side shows going on they have main shows like jousting and, and different stages they have all sorts of food like uh, on saturday i had some fried potato balls which were fantastic Ooh, really um good. they also they also do a really good job of promoting local arts and crafts by basically having stores where it's just like this is a store of a local leather worker and he has all his stuff on display and like it's literally like a store like we went into a bookstore that was in a miniature cathedral that was actually a building of a cathedral you know you could wow. tell it was made out of cinder blocks and plywood but they do a fantastic job on the outside of it and on the inside just doing like a fake facade so it's it's I'm look I'm gonna say it here I'm gonna say it right here, uh -oh. a good Ren Fair, and the Pennsylvania Maryland Ren Fairs are very good, a good Ren Fair. It's better than Disney World, it really is. It's a I quarter break. of the price. It's a quarter of the price, and it's much more entertaining. The food's better. The souvenirs are so much better. It's 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 really good. It's honestly fantastic. I think I can hear the Disney executives scrambling to add new a new <laughs> we gotta expansion. We got to put a rent fair. <laughs> Someone it's resurrect like, Walt. It's, <laughs> it's so good because I I think what, part of what makes it so great is that they ha they have a lot of actors there, right? Who are going around. They're either running sideshows or they're just running around. Will uh, ruined several <laughs> acting careers. Ooh. Okay, so it was the first. Let me set the scene. It's the first day of the Pennsylvania Ren Fair. I don't even know if they had it in 2020. I'm gonna assume no, just to make the story better. So it's been almost two years since these people have played medieval, right? And like 90% of the time, it's improv. They're running around interacting with people, right? And it's it's like 15 minutes after the Ren Fair opens, we're walking along, <laughs> and this this woman, this middle aged woman, comes running up behind us, and she's screaming. She's like, "She's after me! She's after me! She's she's after me for killing a goat!" And she's like, sheep. "I'm the butcher. That's what I'm supposed to do." <laughs> oh, sheep! And she's like, and we're like. Oh, okay. Well, did you did you kill her sheep? She's like, yeah, I'm a butcher. I butch. And and she's like, what else is sheep good for? And Will goes, wool. And the actress just goes. <laughs> and then she just took off running. And we started laughing. We we're like, didn't think of that one. She goes, I'll have to remember that. And then she keeps running. I... Just a... You improv them so hard, you made them break character. It was great. I was just like, wool? <laughs> yeah. And then uh, you tell the story about the other guy later on in the afternoon, because I wasn't there for that one. Well, the other guy wasn't as big, but I was just like, can't, Karen and my hands brushed while we were walking, and not that that's anything, like, we would hold hands and stuff, but you he's... Don't have to brag the, about the, it, the, Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we get it. Um, the guy, <laughs> the actor saw us, and he thought we were holding hands, and so he was trying to make a joke about how if you hold hands, that's how you become pregnant. And then he was like, he re he like halfway got through the joke and then realized we weren't holding hands. He's like, oh, I thought you were holding hands. And I was like, no, I just brushed your hand. And he did this whole thing about, I can't remember what it was, but I looked at him and I was like, yeah, I prefer brushing the hands. It's like playing, it's like playing the harp. And he just looked at me and he's like, that's clever. And just like, ran, <laughs> like, like him as the guy said that and just ran away. I was like, I guess it was clever. No. So he told us that them. story. And then later we're sitting there, we're sitting at a table eating food or something. And the guy walks by and he spots us and he comes over and I, I forget what he says exactly, but he says something like, did you get any hand juice on you? And then he goes, oh no, I'm sorry. That didn't <laughs> sound right. I meant to say like sweat in a clever way, but hand juice does not oh, sound man. right. Oh. It was, it was <laughs> disturbing. The guy was actually genuinely pretty funny and a nice guy. Yeah. But yeah hand juice is not a thing you want to say to people in public. <laughs> yeah um, we had like a five minute conversation with him about my camcorder and he was talking about how it's like vinyl records are coming back and all of that and it was it was pretty cool uh but yeah pennsylvania ren fair it's fantastic um i haven't really been playing any other video games because i'm 
busy packing for an upcoming move. But uh, I just wanted to mention that we've got a new episode of Pixel 8 coming up. It's not just a plug. It's also a plead with you. Go to your Ren Fair. Support those people. They're all out of work uh, former high school drama kids. So, you know, just <laughs> give them your money. Teachers, they deserve it. They and like weird people it. who are into leather crafting but haven't their Etsy business hasn't really taken off. So they're kind of stuck selling at the Ren Fair. They're all fantastic people. 100% deserve it. Go there. Bring a whole bunch of money with you because you got to try all the food they've got. You got to buy all the weird souvenirs. I have like four or five different like handmade mugs now from Ren Fairs because they're awesome. Just Ren Fairs are great. Uh, Kyle, it looks like you've been playing Ass Ass. Is that right? I've been playing a lot of Ass Ass in Creed. Um, <laughs> it's been, I guess you could say it's been an odyssey. Um, yeah, see what I did there? Uh, okay, yeah. So I have, <laughs> this is kind of embarrassing. I've played... Last I checked, like, 78 hours of Assassin's Creed Odyssey, um, which is the most amount of time I've sunk in a game in this short amount of time in a really long time. Um, I really like this game, and it's held my attention for way longer than I thought it would, despite it having a pretty repetitive gameplay loop. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that's just a testament to, out of, out of the the three recent assassin's creed so what origins odyssey which came first or origins, origins. came origins, origins came yeah. first then odyssey and then valhalla out of those three and i've actually talked about this last night with a couple people in chat um odyssey seems to have been the best received one and the one that people had the most fun with by and large i mean i'm sure there are pockets of people who prefer either or but i've just been really enjoying the game i i also have a really great love of greek mythology so it's really cool for me to be able to like go and see like oh this is like you know i'm seeing stuff with perseus or theseus um and the minotaur and, and stuff like that and i think that the story actually other than a few like um so like story in video games is obviously really hard to do and unless you're naughty dog and you're essentially making a movie that's playable um if it's if it's fully interactive like the assassin's creed franchise is the player is going to be able to do stuff out of order right there's going to be certain things yeah. that happen and i think that um especially with odyssey there are certain things especially towards the end game that mm -hmm. don't line up perfectly if you haven't done things in a certain way and it just like it sort of cuts short the emotional heft that certain scenes would have um, so while I really like the story, I think that there could have been a better like patchwork done of like, well, we need to, we need to check gate certain things so that they happen in this order always, regardless of yeah. what the mission structure is. Um, but all that to say, I have been having a really good time with it. I honestly, I just love like sailing, like sailing around yeah. that world. It's, it's great. And it's so pretty. It's such a pretty game. Um, yeah. So I've, I've just been playing the hell out of it and I, I have really had a good time with it. It's ah. it's interesting hearing your experience with it because I had basically the exact same experience with Assassin's Creed Origins, a which year I have ago. not played. I've never played it, so maybe I'll go back yeah. to that one. I've I've heard they're very similar, just mostly like a change in setting, etc. Mm -hmm. But um, I hadn't played any Assassin's Creed except for a couple hours of the first one. But last year, after hearing all the praise for Origins and people being like, "This is not your typical Assassin's Creed game," and I think it was on sale for like. 10 bucks on xbox or something mm. and it was pandemic time when you're just like <laughs> before before you knew how to pandemic properly you're just like what do i do with all this time yeah um so i got the game yeah and i played like 30 hours of it in the first week because it was just like it, it like like i'm right there with you like there's nothing incredible about the gameplay there's nothing incredible about the story yeah. but the way they just set it out and they set the world up is you're just like I'm just gonna sit down for a couple hours and then just play this game over and over and over again and it's it's weird it's weird for me to do that because as as you all know, I'm very judgmental about games. So for me to continuously really? play a game that I'm not even crazy about means there's something special going on there, which is yeah, interesting. I, I completely agree. And I actually found myself thinking that exact same thing where I was like, I've done this mission before. Like I've done this mission 20 times already. Why am I yep. still interested in continuing? Um, yep. And I think, I really do think it's just like something about the structure, something about the... Um, like the little tiny stories that are attached to some of them some of them are just like super bland and you don't give a shit and you just i do it for the experience and then other times you you just happen upon a random mission and it's like this is really well done and this this yeah. actually has some depth to it and 
Um, I found myself not skipping the cutscenes as much as I normally do in a game like Assassin's Creed. So like mm -hmm. something like Mass Effect, where the story is so central, um, yeah. or at least they, they want you to they want you to consider it at least when you're playing. I never skip the cutscenes. And with Assassin's Creed or like certain other RPG games, I'm like, I don't really care. This is just a side mission. Thanks for the voice acting, but I'm just gonna skip right over it. And I found myself doing that way less playing through Odyssey. Um and it's it's just it's really well done. It, like you said, it's not the greatest game in the world, but it's good. And it's yeah. it's sort of addicting in that way. So I definitely recommend it. And I've actually heard that Valhalla is like several steps back from yeah. from Odyssey, which is really disappointing because I was kind of looking forward to playing that next. But now I think with your recommendation, I might just go back and play Origins. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The Origins, um, Origins story, again, I haven't played Odyssey, but I feel like a lot of people who prefer origin to odyssey claim the story is a lot better and from mm -hmm. what i played to the story there was definitely some really strong story beats in there yeah um i i think for me i'm right there with you where i i don't want to hop into Valhalla because i'm not that interested in vikings plus the reaction has been a little bit lukewarm yeah so i am actually excited about it feels like they have actually turned this series around and valhalla was just a misstep because origins and odyssey were so well done so i'm excited for this new weird multi-world episodic assassin's creed that keeps being rumored you know i'm, I'm excited for whatever that is assassin's creed infinity or yeah, in, in, that's right okay it, something i think like it's that. yeah something like that i i played origins a bunch i really enjoyed origins um i didn't touch odyssey um and i've played about an hour of valhalla i own it karen played a little bit too it's the one thing that annoyed me is i was so used to the bird tactics from origins and they're yeah. not the bird in Valhalla doesn't do the same things. Yeah, and, oh. that's, and that's actually one of the things that people were complaining about was in in um, Odyssey. It's it's a hawk. And it's kind of like it makes sense because like hawks, you assume, have like really good eyesight. So you use it to sort of do your stealthy like, OK, there's guys here. There's this thing here. I'm going to plan what I'm going to do, how I'm going to approach this. And then people said that Valhalla like does away with that. Yeah, there's there's something there with like, uh, like a there's like a sense thing you can do. With yeah, like, I, I, mm. I I'm not far enough to have unlocked anything that might add to it. But as far as like starting that game off, that bird is useless. Like it's just for like visual. And I'm like, yeah. no, give me the stupid thing where I can mark where people are and everything. Yeah. Um, yeah. I I I only got Valhalla because I love Norse stuff, um, way more than I like Egypt or ancient Greece. So I thought I'd be really into it, but I, I kind of fell off of it. I, I could see myself going back to it if I was locked in a prison. It was the only game, but uh, maybe I'll I, I, st I got it on a deal. So we'll, we'll see. I, and I'll keep so, you updated if Karen keeps playing it. Really? You're, you're just saying that you prefer raping and pillaging to philosophy and pyramid building? Yeah, 100%. <laughs> Mostly the pillaging side. I, I would say 100% the pillaging side. <laughs> Let's just clear the air there. Okay. Um, um, yeah, uh, so um, I have been playing a bunch of games because I'm unemployed. Um, I played through all the Bioshock games. I've expressed Ooh. my feelings over the past couple weeks. I have finished Bioshock Infinite, and I can definitively say... Give me your or, give me your ranking. Give I me your think ranking. Bioshock Infinite is the best Bioshock game, and then Bioshock One and then Two because Two is terrible. That is exactly how I would rank them. I never finished playing Two. I got like halfway through and I was like, I'm not having fun anymore. Yeah, yeah. I think you could argue One has a better story, but I think overall package of a video game. I mentioned this last week. The world you explore of Columbia is great because you get to experience it as Columbia and as a war-torn Civil War place. Um, I remember the story being a lot more confusing as a kid, but I think that's because I was a kid and not really paying attention. Um, for, I, for the original? No, for Bioshock Infinite. I, I think... How? I was in college when that came out. How old were you? I mean, I, I would... Three or I four. was, yeah, I was three or four. Okay, I no, I was, I was in college too, but I think I just like wasn't paying attention. I think I was just playing, oh, okay. you know, like playing the game and just ignoring everything. Um, I think, I think it came together pretty well. I, I think yeah. 
the like there's always a lighthouse and always a thing way of explaining rapture and that stuff was kind of stupid but the i actually whole... kind of like that I, I, mean, I like I the, mean, video, yeah. the video gameness of it. But. Yeah, but I, I, it felt like they had to tie it to the other Bioshock games, and that part I didn't like. Mm-hmm. But the part where you are spoilers for Bioshock Infinite, if anyone hasn't played this game, uh, that you have be, you were Comstock the whole time and Booker DeWitt and all that sort of stuff, like repeating itself over oh. and over. Wait, wait, sorry, wait. You're this. You're Comstock and Booker DeWitt in the same timeline booker do it yeah or that you Comstock switch before yes Comstock. before oh. he oh and then, before and then wounded time, knee when he time. gets so con, con, booker do it, so booker do it gives away his daughter to comstock yes. and then booker wit do it grows up becomes comstock and then buys his daughter back from booker do it in the past so it's like a cyclical like, thing I, of him i forgot yeah. about all of that it's like the the grandpa paradox or whatever the yeah Luke's, Luke's but it's also neat because on yeah. top of that thing they add the elizabeth with her powers can go to other dimensions that are a little bit different so it's fun um i i, I do think it's the best bioshock game um also you the combat in that one is just so it's so frenetic and fun yeah, yeah i do miss the upgrade system of bioshock one but being able mm-hmm. to just buy upgrades whenever you have money in Bioshock Infinite is way better than waiting for power to the people machines in Bioshock 1. I actually um, remember specific, like, it's, it's weird that this would stand out to me for, from Infinite, but, like, specific sound effects that they use. Like, there's, like, I forget what it's for, but there's this huge clanking noise that happens either when you enter a new area or something like that and it's just like it's very distinct oh Kyle. and i just i remember certain things about that game that just really oh no don't bring up a soundboard oh, oh no wait wait text alert. wait wait this is a pg-13 stream will wait where is it i'm so sorry forget what that's called no it's not called that definitely definitely not the home run bat where is it? No. That's <laughs> it. It's on my phone. I know so it is. Oh, here right we here. go. Yes, that's it. Yes. I I don't know why that sound has stuck in my head, but it's so distinct. It's called it sounds New like Objective. New Objective. That's what it is. Yeah. yeah. I, I downloaded a bunch of video game text things in whatever dumb Apple format like years ago. Like and they're all still on my phone. Yeah. Um, oh so people know you're cool when you use them yeah now. exactly yeah. um i was gonna say i i played the first part of the burial at sea rapture dlc and that was even cool because that lets you experience rapture before it was That's um the one thing crazy. i never played and i i heard that that dlc was like really good yeah I, I i'm a little ways into part two but part one was really good it's it's still it's one of the tears from infinite so it's still um, somewhat Colombian. It's not full Rapture, um, yeah. but it's neat. Uh, I was also going to say it's not the best Ken Levine game, though, because System Shock 2 is still an incredible game, video game. Um, sorry, I want to get through this pretty quick. Uh, I play 12 minutes. Did either of you play 12 minutes? No, I, 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 no. I was super... I, don't, I don't know if it's good or not. It's There's terrible. It's completely it's absolutely split. awful. It's a terrible video game. <laughs> so is that we talked about this before, like a, a several podcast episodes ago, and we were excited about it. I think all we of were. us were excited Great about cast. it. And then I, I have not had anything spoiled, but I heard that the ending is like truly terrible. So I at one point I needed Karen's help and she looked up a guide to get the true ending and we got the true ending and I just looked at her and I said what like I I was like oh this ending's going to explain everything it's going to resolve everything yeah. um no so it's, it's a Kojima game no it's it explains less than a Kojima game also it would have been great if wow. any of these actors were in the same room when they recorded anything um, oh. they, there's, there's, they, they just can't play off of each other because they're not there. Yeah. You mean? Or like the other thing is I you'll go up to your wife and be like, hey, honey, uh, I just discovered this isn't anything. I'm making it up. I, I just discovered there's a bunch of dead people in our bathroom. She'll be like, oh, my God. And then you'll be like, 
and it'll, then it'll cut to her next voice line being like i'm gonna get a glass of water but it's completely normalized and it's what? just like there's no every time you're presented Whoa. with new information no continuity of it emotion. doesn't line up with any of the audios there's a thing that that you find early on in the game say i'm gonna pretend say it's, uh, you find house keys to a new brand new house or to a brand new car mm -hmm. And you see those brand new car keys. And you're like, oh, brand new car keys. You, as a normal human being, would go, my wife just bought me a car. That's incredible. I got a brand new car. So hour, like an hour into this game, you use those car keys that are in a present to prove that you're in a time loop to someone. So then later on in the game, you bring out the car keys, and the wife is like, oh, the car keys. I've been meaning to tell you, I bought you a car. And he just what? like, you bought me a car? What? Like, as if he never knew there were car what? keys, like amazed that she bought what? him a car as if he didn't know the whole time. Like but he's in the, but he's in a time loop. But you he's know, in a he's time loop. To know all this. And he knows all this from finding the car keys. But it's when she tells him they're car keys. It's when he realizes he has a new, it's obviously not car keys, but it's something oh, along those lines that the whole time he should have realized this was the thing. And he, when she tells him it, he acts surprised as if he's finding out and not in an acting way, in a bad writing way. Um, no. Yeah, it's, mm. it's, it's not a good point and click adventure game. It, it, it breaks the rule of like, you can't do everything in the first run like you could in outer wilds like you need you need to find things so the options come up to talk to people which is fine but it's just like it's it's just and it, it, yeah it's, it's just what's the, it's what's, the total, what's the total play time here average i want to say it was like five hours four hours might have been less and how much how much was it uh, it was on game pass, pass so it was free oh okay so it was free um and is it is it uh annapurna yeah, actor, which is surprising. Like which is weird because Annapurna normally puts out pretty good stuff. And they delayed this whole game to it put was, the I, actors into it. Yeah. And I just don't know how anyone at Annapurna heard the story pitch and said yes. I just, I don't, I don't know. Um, who, who wrote it? Some person who exists. Oh. Okay. It's just like, it's just like, you know, when it was first pitched, it was like, oh, you're doing a time loop thing. But it was so well presented that a time loop is not good enough anymore. Even in a video game, it's not good enough. But it was so well presented that you believed that they were doing it right, where there was so many possibilities that it felt believable that there was a story worth telling and worth playing through and so many different options and pathways and ways to interact with people in the environment. And hearing all these negative takes, it's like, oh, they didn't do that. They just did a bad generic time loop. Yeah. And it's just like, ugh, that's disappointing. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I was super disappointed by that, but um, yeah. Uh, and then finally, uh, I've been playing a bunch of Train Sim World Two. It's on uh, PC Game Pass. I don't know if it's on console Game Pass. Uh, basically, a it's by the same people who make Train Simulator, but it is a parsed down uh, campaign, if you will. So there's three different campaigns. There's uh, the it's like Pacific Northwest. I don't think it is, but it's American freight trains. Then there's, I think it's German high speed trains and London underground. So the three separate campaigns, I'm doing the American one. And I, they first, they run you through the tutorial, teach you how to drive the train, everything like that. And then they throw you into missions. There's also just an open world where you can walk through the entire map and like go to points and like pick up missions and stuff. Um, so I've been playing that. It's super relaxing to listen to podcasts, grab a train, deliver, like bring cargo over to a place, move cars around, all this sort of stuff. Um, the ones I've been doing are all like, they even give you a, a time indicator. So it's like, I was going to start one earlier, but it said it would be an hour. And I was like, ah, I don't want to do this for an hour. You can save whenever. Um, they're pretty fun. They're informative. Uh, uh, the tutorials were not as doing the tutorials you felt they were pretty clear uh once i went to go drive the train there were a couple things they never mentioned that i either found in the cockpit or was able to look up online there's like this m2ua break that i needed to turn off um but once mm -hmm. i did that uh it was super fun it is it's pretty well uh good looking games 4k um 
it is it is the up it is the poster child of what train simulators should be but on the flip side you can only do these these trains and these missions and stuff you can't just hop in any train and drive around um, so so i'm i'm a little confused here so what's the difference between train simulator and train sim world so train sim world are you're doing these three area campaigns like with, story campaigns in a yeah way, with like, a specific yeah. train in each area and you're doing the different missions in those areas that are like deliver cargo run the london underground deliver passengers and, and train simulator is like microsoft flight simulator where it's just like any train do whatever you want yeah 100 percent. I, I haven't gone oh, okay. i own train simulator um 21 because it updates every year um i haven't gone back to that to see if the controls kind of transfer over i would assume they would because trains are the same um but i haven't really tested that because i i've been playing this game a bunch and i keep getting a hankering i'm like i just want like a steam train and just to go um, in real life yeah in real life um I, but honestly if if someone threw me into a gp38 right now was like we need someone to drive this train i think i could maybe if it was already running i could drive it if it was from cold start i could not do a thing <laughs> yeah um so which is kind of kind of cool i'm waiting for you to tell me that there's a dlc add-on for a gritty first person uh super dark psychological thomas the tank engine story experience that's, that's really what i want out of this type of game I, i'd be into that I, the cool thing is uh like tony hawk underground tony hawk underground you can just get off your skateboard and or you can get off the train and just run around and walk around oh, i like, thought you meant you could take the train off the tracks and just that like, go. would be cool but it's like oh, it's wow. a, you have to refuel the train you can get off you can uncouple cars you can go into cars you can open doors it's like that's... pretty extensive so <sighs> I may have to play this game. <laughs> it's fun. Uh, I would definitely recommend checking out, especially if you have Game Pass. Uh, it's it's fun because you're stuck on the rails. You can't you can't do anything wrong on the rails, man. The one piece of advice I have for you, Ian, which I found out the hard way, in the pause menu, you can look at the live. You can look at the map, and you can change the mm -hmm. switches. And when you click on the switches, nothing happens. Or so you think, because when you unpause the game, all the clicks you did activate. So if you want to see the oh. live map not paused, you have to hit nine on the keyboard and you can change the switches and watch them change. Gotcha. So that kept messing me up, uh, which is why on our Discord, there's a screenshot of me facing another train because he was <laughs> in my way. I was literally, I came up to him like this and then I backed up and he was like the aggressive driver who was just matching me for speed <laughs> the entire way and i i kept getting up to crossings where i could then go forward past him but he would come too close so i couldn't get past him i'm like oh bro what is going on here <laughs> i wanted to get off my train and go see if i can get on his <gasps> and just beat him up does this have multiplayer i i actually don't know i did not look that up um that's tempting but it, it sent me down a long tempting. list of best train games and there's one called derailed that is a vr train game but it's also not vr they say both versions work uh and people really seem to like that game the some of the steam screenshots have explosions which makes me really excited um and then I I put that was that the one that was mentioned in no so that's a different one that's a train layout simulator which is also really cool oh, that's right well let me put this on my steam wish list and then oh, it's planned release date Oh no, sorry. Is this derailed when a domestic terrorist resurfaces? It falls on an overburdened police department to discover his plot and put an end to it. I think it's derail. It's it's derail valley. Sorry, derail valley. Derail valley. Because um, sequel to um, Stardew. Yeah, I like to put the on my wish list, and then when they go on sale, I buy them. It's exactly I what I did. This, none of this is a surprising um, statement. But because they're VR games, you never really know if it's good or not. And I, I don't want to pay 20 bucks for something that could be iffy. So I'm like. So I, I went on a hunt to find some good out. train simulator games. And basically everyone who is super into the hobby agrees that Open Rails, which is the Microsoft train simulator game from 2001 that I also have a box in my closet, is still the definitive train video game. <laughs> 
and if you go to open rails and look at some of the like beginner things oh, it is it is like straight out of n64 graphics it's have crazy you, have you seen um have you hit the train spotting community on uh, tiktok yet no but you should see the my discover feed on instagram because it is just model trains and yeah. train videos and then and then it's people with that weird goo that squeeze the bottle and then take a bite out of it have you seen that yes it's, yes. it's some but, girl did it with ranch and i almost threw up it was the reason why the reason why i bring it up is is one of the minor tiktok celebrities outside of the train spotting community is is a british train spotter he just turned 21 and i know that because he had a 21st birthday tiktok where he was like he's like for my 21st birthday i'm gonna go see my favorite train <laughs> and then it's him and he's and he's in a suit and he's standing like at an at a overpass for a railway and the train's coming and he he makes this noise which is basically just oh, oh, oh. And then the best part, <laughs> by far the best part, is he always straps either a GoPro or a 360 camera to his forehead and then switches to a very up-close, distorted view of his face, just going, <gasps> <gasps> as the steam train passes. It's incredible. It's You have to look it up. It's incredible. I love trains. I feel I like I just experienced it, so... I it's, was at my parents a couple insane. weekends ago and I was looking at my train collection and I was like, I want to bring this to New Jersey, but I can't. I'm I'm taking Amtrak for the very first time tomorrow. So <sighs> I'm I'm kind of excited, but it's also like a 19 hour overnight trip in a coach seat. So not terribly excited, but let's see what happens. I'm so jealous. That's gonna be fun. Um, okay, I've talked enough about trains and running trains. Uh, so we should probably uh, move on uh, to, uh, <laughs> sorry engineering uh, trains uh, um, it's time to move on to the news and it's time to play our favorite news theme that everyone loves and we're gonna do that now who's that Here's the news, we're talking about news, it's gaming news, what's up news? Wow, incredible. I, um, you know, he, 50 bucks will get you a lot when it comes to people joining your Discord room to sing a song. Um, but I only pay him 10, so that's why he's sometimes late. <clears throat> um, folks, there's a lot of news to talk about. And when I think about news, I think about Gamescom, opening night live. Not Did a bad segue. Either I mean, five out of ten. Of you watched the Gamescom opening yeah. night live. I, I, I watched did not. I watched the next Lander stream. Um God, I hate them. No, they're great. Um so I, I, I just, linked here. I, I'm just allergic to Keeley Productions. They're just they're way too yeah. kiss ass and they're way too commercial. Honestly, I, I only watched it to see more details on one video game. Um and we'll probably That's get right. to that at some point. So um, I am we are viewing the Gamescom opening night live biggest announcements by uh, Polygon. So if you want to follow along and or yell at us for not including a game that was not part of the biggest announcements, then you can go cry about it. Um, some of the highlights Saints Row reboot revealed. I thought it looked not fun. I'm going to I'm going to watch it now, but um. I saw some screenshots from it. I was literally just thinking about, did you guys, you guys ever played Saints Row? What's your Saints Row history? Uh, I played Saints Row 2 and 3. And played 1 or 2. Very much liked 2 and thought 3 was fine. Yeah. I think I played I, 1 I or played... 2 and, sorry, uh, and uh, f the the superpower one. 4? Oh, I think it was that one. 3. The one, wh whichever one it is that you're president. Um... um... Yeah. I I played one when it came out. That's the only one I played. And I, I, I really liked it because it felt like, you know, before there was a whole bunch of like open world GTA clones, this felt like its own thing. It yep. felt like a really good GTA clone. They had vehicle <laughs> customization, which I really enjoyed. They had like the gang war turf stuff, which I really enjoyed. And it was just kind of like a, like a solid seven out of 10. I was like, I'm enjoying it. You know, similar to Assassin's Creed we were talking about earlier, where I'm just like, you know what? This has got some good stuff. It's got some bad stuff, but I'm just enjoying playing it. Yeah. And I never really, I think I tried Saints Row the Third for a little bit, but it, 
it didn't i was i was going back to it too late and it didn't feel right so i'm kind of excited to see what they do with this because if if they can get kind of back to that magic that i liked about the first game while getting away from the insanity that that it's become i you know i i want to see them improve on their core mechanics as opposed to just making an insane over the top story like they've been doing okay so i i agree um where it feels like this trailer that they showed which obviously you know at least as far as i know we didn't see any gameplay it was just the hype trailer they they showed gameplay as well okay i i must have missed that so i haven't seen the gameplay i've only seen the the cgi trailer um but even from that and i also segue i just went back and looked i played saints row three and four not one and two i forgot Mm -hmm. that there was a fourth one the third one i i liked and the fourth one i thought was like just okay but uh anyway i i don't know just just from the trailer it seemed like it was missing something that made saints row sort of like light up in my brain as like oh yeah i remember saints row that was a good time like i just watched the trailer mm-hmm. and i got i got tinges of Fortnite and and a little bit of yeah. um, that was what i was sorry, gonna Will. say i was i was gonna say it, it looks like a Fortnite game at least from the trailer like the characters yeah. look exactly like they're from Fortnite. um which i guess you could argue Fortnite characters look like they're from saints row maybe um a little bit like a little bit but anyway the, yeah. the other thing the other thing was in saints row I don't know about the first two, but in Saints Row three and four, they had the same characters. It was like Shanti and um, like a, a, there were like named characters that you could remember yeah. that were part of the story. And they, as far as I know, they don't have them in the in as playable characters in the new game. Um, which I, if they're doing a prequel to how the Saints became the Saints, it kind of feels weird not to have those same characters in there. I mean, I'm sure they'll make appearances, maybe, but I don't know. It just seems very strange, a yeah. strange choice to me. I think this this is a full reboot. Um, oh, and also, okay. yeah, I, I agree. Like the whole time I watched that that trailer, I was like, this just looks like Fortnite. Yeah. And also them saying it's all it can. It doesn't have to be that it is allowed four player co op for everything. Um, mm-hmm. It kind of just looks like a GTA Online clone from a from some of the uh, gameplay they showed off. Mm-hmm. It was like people in helicopters shooting things and everything. So. I don't, yeah. I've never been a huge fan of Saints Row. I, it was one or two I played a ton of at a friend's house, um, and then a little bit of four because I think, I think it was on Game Pass when Game Pass first started, and I was like, oh, I'll check this out. But yeah. it'll be interesting to see if it, again, if it comes to Game Pass, I'll download it. So, um, the Fraxis uh, announced their new Marvel XCOM game. Uh, Midnight Suns, based off the Midnight Suns property. Um, eh, It doesn't seem like you are creating your own superheroes and doing that sort of stuff. So there's there's an interview, and basically they say you are creating the main protagonist of the game, but all the other members of your team are actual pre-established markets. And there's no permadeath. Um, We talked about that. That's not what we want. want. And also... uh, Alex Navarro was saying this from a, a uh, on an Excellander podcast that the develop uh, the lead designer I can't think of his name mentioned that there are no game mechanics in uh, borrowed from XCOM in the new Marvel game, which like he said zero game mechanics and I don't know what that means. How does that work? Yeah. <laughs> um, does because that mean I know everything's like, brand new and exciting and innovative, I, or does it mean we've had to cut some stuff? Maybe just like, does that mean there's no grid? Everything. There's no cover? There's no sh- guns? There's no yeah, like. That's weird. What does that mean? So there's no characters. There's no graphics. It's just completely. At different. this point, it's just, just give me XCOM three. At um, this point, just give this property to Ubisoft because they're making the best tactical <laughs> turn-based games right now. Rabbids, man, waiting for it. Um. Next up, uh, Halo Infinite got a release date, uh, December 8th, 2021. Woo! Excited for that. I contemplated buying that new controller they revealed, which is the this Master Chief snazzy. Elite. It's $200, yeah. though. Ooh! Oh, my goodness. What's, what's the normal Elite? 179 Still both way too expensive. Yeah. But I will say it. It looks better than the Xbox Series X Halo One, which is just. Yeah, I actually I'm think that crazier. looks pretty cool. I don't. I thought. I, the, I thought the console. Oh, the console. Cool. Also, the console, it's, it's so. 
it's sold out in like yeah a quarter of a second if i didn't already have a series x i would think about it Um, i i think that's that's why i think it looks cool is because i don't have one so it's like oh i can imagine that being like my first you know new xbox console in yeah um they did a bizarre thing where the developer their lead game designer for horizon forbidden west came up and said they have really good news for everybody um and the good news was that the game's coming out in February 2022, but they kind of skipped over the news that it was delayed to February 2022. So they were trying to play off yeah. the good news is we're announcing a release date hidden above the bad news, which is that it's been delayed. I never realized those were rumors. Like I, I yeah, I think the it was it was definitely rumors, never confirmed. Um, I think the closest we got was they said like we're looking forward to games this fall. And they mentioned a couple of games, but they did not mention Horizon. That was the closest we got to like pseudo confirmation. But I think the funniest thing here for me as somebody who, uh, let's be honest, I'm not super happy with Sony right now. Uh, they released a new patch for Horizon Zero Dawn, which enables 60 FPS gameplay on PS5, which begs the question, you're telling me if I played Horizon Zero Dawn on a PS5 before that patch, it wasn't 60 FPS? Are you kidding me? Yeah. What? Crazy. I might have to go That's back and crazy. check out that game again now that it's running in 60. So, Sony, um, get your backwards compatibility together. <laughs> I think you my know? favorite thing about this delay is that it means the hot new Sony release of the year will be God. Death Stranding Director's Cut oh, yes. featuring amazing things like the Buddy Bot and a giant cannon and so many other cool things and new sneaking missions and a virtual mission. Uh, virtual and, arsenal and not jetpacks <laughs> uh, and not jetpacks and those things that just and racing re- yeah i'm excited so i love death stranding um the one thing they still they still have not added is a way to play music while you're walking i was so mad they showed off new why songs have they not added in the thing that? and i was like what i want songs while i'm walking kojima that's all yeah. i want Man, if they just had a little in-game Walkman and then you could play it and it gave like a Why slightly tinny have feel. Sony Walkman. I don't. The, I don't Metal Gear Solid Five had that. Why didn't they just continue it? It's about his Walkman all the time. He t- p- takes pictures and puts it on Twitter all the time of his Walkman. But, Come on, Metal Gear gosh. Solid Five had music and this yes. feature. I don't know why yes. it's not in this. It, it's not the engine. Um, yeah, I haven't figured out MP3s yet, so. Still I just my that. favorite thing is with the buddy bot you can just you can have Sam sit on it. That's the best, the best mechanic. It's basically, like I'm gonna have the computer do the game for me. <laughs> I was so excited. Perfect. Um, also, they had an extremely long and drawn out demo of Call of Duty Vanguard, which unfortunately is not the alt history World War II game I wanted. Uh, um, if only. So I it's just just. I don't. I'm, I'm looking at this care. demo playthrough and it's Stalingrad, which, if you guys remember, Call of Duty One and Call of Duty Two had some fantastic Eastern Front missions, including in Stalingrad. And this and just Black Ops Two, I think. This just does not. It, this is just not. This is this this. I don't want to say this doesn't look bad. It's just like this is nowhere near the glory yeah. of Call of Duty. I this made me care. pull out. I pulled yeah. out my copy of Call of Duty Two because it's backwards compatible, so I could load it up. Because that game is fantastic. Um, yeah. Anyways, those are all the big Gamescom opening night live reveals. Um, yeah. You're not, not talk about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. No, I don't give a rat's behind yes. about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Although uh, that Super Monkey Ball game is getting closer, and Kiryu's in it, so get excited. Um, oh. Okay, back to the notes sheet. Uh, we touched on Halo Infinite, got its release date December 8th, 2021. But what we didn't get into is that the game will not be launching with co op campaign or Forge. Um, the folks from 343 got onto a development update and video, and where they explained that uh, they're going to do seasons because that's a crazy new concept. Uh, I believe they revealed they were doing three month seasons um something like that yeah. yeah they and they posted a seasonal roadmap uh and season one i think they were gonna add co-op campaign and then season two is forge it might be two and three i, I don't know if the season do starts if, when the game comes out or not do we know if this this season is this is this season in the 
live multiplayer service sense where it's just like oh we're gonna add new multiplayer maps or is this season in terms of like we're adding single player content as well i think i think it's both i think every three months is a new season so it'll be a new seasonal pass probably a battle pass Mm -hmm. multiplayer stuff special events and an update i mean probably the exact same way destiny does it and a lot of other games because I, um, I think that's what I'm trying to get at is I, I, I'm on board. I'm 100% on board for open world Halo Infinite as a live service. Um, but I just need to know that they are fully committing to that model. Yeah. Um, you know, I want to know that it's going to be adding content like Destiny, hopefully of a better quality and sense than Destiny. But, you know, I, I, I want to know that this is... It, hey, if it's just a single play open world like an Assassin's Creed game, I'm fine with that too. I'm perfectly fine with that too, if it's well done. But I really like the idea of I want to get into Halo Infinite like I would any other MMO like Destiny, like Final yeah. Fantasy, like World of Warcraft. I would love for that to happen. Yeah. And um, I, I think I mentioned this in the Discord, but I, I'm excited that there's enough time between Battlefield 2042 and this. So I don't get caught up in both multiplayers. Because those are like the two games I've played multiplayer in. And uh, mm-hmm. that way I, I have some space between them um moving on here in the news uh this was literally hot off the presses today uh overwatch put out a statement saying they are going to rename the character jesse mccree uh as people know jesse mccree the character is named after the game designer who was recently fired from blizzard for sexual harassment among other things uh which is a you know a big no-no i saw a lot of people complaining that um people name themselves in video games after like i don't think that's the point to complain about here i think the point to complain about is that that's normal also this person is horrible um yeah yeah. they said they're gonna try they're not try they're not gonna name characters after uh people living people who work on the game anymore um also this is like the worst probably possible thing they were gonna release a story arc this fall and the, he was Jesse McCree was like central to the story arc, so they've now <laughs> pushed that back, and they're putting out a new map and some other stuff. But I'm just like the worst compounded problem is the one character named after someone <laughs> caused yeah, all feel, this issue. I, I just feel really bad for all the people who've made fan art and fan fiction who now have to go back into their descriptions and into their stories and control F mccree to whatever they end up naming him like that's yeah. gonna take five yeah. minutes for everybody uh, do you think do they it. change it whole cloth or make it similar why don't they just call him jesse something and they just I'm stick tell you jesse they had any balls they would just kill the character off they'd write him out that's what i was thinking what if they just change the spelling <laughs> they have like 30 <laughs> heroes now <laughs> they have 30 heroes Give him, give him, give him a warm send off for the character, but at the same time, retire the name for business reasons. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I personally like, I, I the the guy's a piece of shit, and I'm glad he's fired. And I'm glad he's gone. Um, I, like, is this gonna is this name change gonna matter? No, like it's this not token, really gonna do anything. Gesture. It's just, it's just, I I just don't see the point. Like, if if the game had just come out. I'd say sure, change it. But Overwatch has been well ingrained in gaming culture for years. And it's like there's there's so much built up about these characters. Maybe not recently because Overwatch is sort of well, Blizzard is sort of going straight to hell, basically. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I don't I think that this is, you know, it's just it's not gonna do anything, it's not gonna change anything, and it's just sort of a, I guess a nice way for Blizzard to create some publicity, maybe. That, that's literally it it is it is literally like it's low-hanging fruit it's what's the easiest it's oh my god the masses are coming at us with pitchforks and torches what's the easiest thing we can do right now to quote unquote appease them without actually implementing organizational meaningful change, meaningful change. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. okay we'll, we'll change his name okay yeah so stupid so we'll see where that goes um in the future um ian quick question for you what is the coolest and hippest thing that we can teach kids about in Fortnite? Uh, that's a very tough tee. I don't. Can you can you softball that for me a little bit? Yeah. Um. It, what is 
civil rights. I, two things I love. Two things I love in life. Martin Luther King Jr. and flossing. And finally, I can do them together in Fortnite. I don't know why they did this. There's probably some sort of business publicity reason, but how in the world did this get by Fortnite and time? And I think there may have been another organization involved as well as, yeah, let's take this cartoony game that is very popular, yes, but is kind of looked down upon by the gaming community in general and does not take anything seriously and is just a giant cash grab to the extent that we've talked about it they're they're scorned by the gaming community because they literally just monopolize and monetize and steal from other games and let's have an mlk jr themed exhibit interactive built into fortnite it's just like why why terrible terrible this is people who are like so outside of the norm of society and don't understand how to do things properly that they go fortnite's popular what if fortnite anti-racism is also popular what if fortnite was <laughs> anti-racist that's great the yeah, that'll get the kids going let's do this let's do this you know it's just so stupid I, I hate yeah it. watching people watching the xenomorph and rick from rick and morty walking around and posing in front of the different things in this mlk museum and watching yeah. the i have a dream speech on a giant screen was it's eye-opening just... yeah um like, i mean they they started with palpatine and i guess they they just wanted to swing way in, the <laughs> in hell kyle i forgot about that now i'm mad about star wars again Damn it. Oh, i just like i'm gonna be clear video games are an incredible medium just like any other uh aesthetic medium you can do incredible moving touching empathetic uh instructive things with it this is not the way to do it this yeah. feels like a horrible marketing cash grab and it's just I mean dumb. even it, even them releasing better. this as a separate executable in epic would have been better like yes, as 100%. a museum that you can go do in the unreal engine and, yeah, and don't I, let me don't let me take my fortnite skins into this so that I can dab and floss as as right. Rick from Rick and Morty I, in front of the MLK speech, I was which is literally what people are doing even a even in a game like Roblox this would have made more sense because that is a game of different games yes like yes. that would have been more okay but but kids going in this museum walking around looking at this different stuff and then leaving and then going into a game where the, uh, not even leaving the game but changing to the mode where they just shoot each other it's not I'm the just, right I'm just place. seeing I'm seeing parallels between this and Justin Bieber saying that Anne Frank would be a believer that would like Martin Luther King would play <laughs> Fortnite I forgot about that. That's so good. What's his rationale? Is that she was a teenager? Like, what? I guess I don't know. I mean, like, guess MLK, right. MLK would MLK would play Fortnite. You know? Yeah. Did he mean if she was I mean, alive? Still? Yeah. I guess. Yeah. As an old woman, she would no. be a believer. I don't. I think I think it was if Anne Frank was alive today, she would be. I hope she would be a believer. I don't think he read he the unedited version. This is gonna be very Maybe cynical, but I feel like I feel like in my head I'm almost reading it as Justin going like, "Yeah, she sounds like somebody I should care about, just like I care about my fans." And it's like, well, you only care about them because they make you money. So yeah, she really only care would about be a believer. <laughs> you really only care about people you can monetize and capitalize off of some way. It's that's awful. Yeah. Oh. Um. Skip. Sorry. Skip all this. Yeah, we can skip the rest of this. None of it's good. Um, man, I can't believe it's 10 o'clock already. I, I will just say, because we talked about it, did we talk about it in the, the fake opening or the real opening? We talked about it in the real opening, the Twitch hate, uh, oh, hate raids. Yeah. Um, so just to give some context to that, basically there are individuals going around doing hate raids where they, um, they're buying a bunch of fake, fake Twitch bots where they're just fake Twitch viewers. They raid your channel with, let's say, several thousand of these fake Twitch viewers. And they're all saying uh, inappropriate words like the N-word, but in a variety of ways with various characters such that it gets around the typical uh, word bans or uh, uh, anti-racism blocking on Twitch. And um, it's just like a very disturbing trend. And I think the most disturbing part about, well, okay, I'm not gonna go that far. What one of the very startling parts about it is that Twitch is just like laissez faire in a way. They're basically saying, like, we gave you the tools to do it. I, I saw a fantastic um tweet 
by uh, this guy who's a software developer, but also a Twitch streamer. And he basically said, you know, Twitch Twitch told us that they gave us that we already have all the tools to block to block this, you know, like by by blocking words and having word filters and things. And he's like, well, let me just give you an example. If you think about the word jogger, which is J-O-G-E and R, it's some combination of those letters. Um, he's like, I'm going to write a bot that comes up with all of the out of all the characters that you're allowed to post in Twitch, how many variations of that you can you can post of the word jogger. And it was like 76 million. And then he was like, okay, given the current tools, how quickly can I add all of those words to my Twitch bot so that it blocks those words? And there's like a, there's like a limitation. I think it's like 120 uh, API requests per minute or something like that mm -hmm. or per second. And it was like, it was like, it would take me like four weeks of an automated program constantly sending commands to my Twitch bot to fully block the list for this single word of possible actions. And it's just calling out like Twitch, wow. you gotta, you gotta step up, you gotta do something about this. Like your community is hurting. You're just taking advantage of people with with all these DMCA takedowns, with all this like hot tub stream nonsense. Now with these hate raids that you're just not doing enough to block and deal with. And it's it's the hate raids are awful, but it's also awful how Twitch is just continuing to take advantage of essentially it's cash cow streamers and they're just not doing enough to protect them it's awful yeah that's that's yeah. terrible i i can't believe yeah like that's such a, I, I mean someone shouldn't have to go through the lengths to prove that it is a problem yeah and even though they have they're still not listening like it's a nightmare i i don't know why it seems like so many big tech companies take the same approach where it's like, we're like, it's your fault basically that you can't fix this on your own. Um, you don't really yeah. see many, uh, you don't really see many platforms owning up to the fact where it's like, Hey, we fucked up with not, not giving um, enough support to you guys from our end, from the back end to stop this from happening in the first place. And the impetus of protection for this type of stuff should not be put on the user or its mod team. If they're like a bigger, um, a, a bigger streamer or something like that, like you should have a certain level of security and, and understanding that, Hey, at least from stuff like this happening in the future, I know I'm pretty well protected. Obviously if it's a really targeted attack on one person, then yeah, like it's hard to prepare for that. But if it's just sort of a blanket thing where it's like, we know how these people are operating, we know mm -hmm. largely how these things are being done. If it's if it's to that extent that people are writing this many articles about it and this many streamers are having this many problems, then Twitch, I feel like should be able to do something or, or should be working on stuff and publicly stating that they are working on stuff in the future. Yeah. And I think that second part is key. They they just there's just a complete breakdown in communication between Twitch and its community. Like for example, for a long time they were banning people and not telling them why they were banned. They recently said we're going to stop doing that. We're going to tell you why you're banned. Taking the Reddit but, approach, apparently. Yeah, but it's but it's not even telling you, hey, we banned you because of this explicit example on this stream yeah. for this date. It's just like we banned you for offensive content, and it's it's there's just a complete breakdown of, commu of communication and it's it's i understand they can't turn around a solution in 24 48 72 hours sure that, that takes a herculean effort for software development but open that channel of communication you know make us feel better make us feel like we are heard and that you are working towards some sort of solution you don't have to communicate what that solution is yet but you need to at least open up that channel of communication and get it flowing that is that is key and it's just not there yeah i completely agree yeah um well that's it folks that's gonna be the show let me play a little outro music here you don't want to um, play the game no because i i am hot and i want to go to bed fair enough sorry um folks if you enjoyed the show you can consider seeing our other content by going to subpixelfilms.com where you can see all of our hot hot content uh recently i released another highlight of uh chris from save data i playing through the turning point fall of liberty game uh that was certainly very fun um ian has as pencil our pennsylvania Ra uh, railway pennsylvania renaissance fair video coming out this monday that'll be a blast um 
you can find us all on Twitter at Subpixel Team. You can find Ian on Twitter at Ian, uh, Think Gibson. Man, I'm losing it tonight. You can find Kyle on Twitter at Kyle. Cut him off. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Hunty70. You can find all of our content everywhere you look. Uh, Saturday, probably around 11 a.m., I'm going to be streaming out of the studio with Chris. I think we're playing Ride to Hell Retribution is what Chris wants to play. Uh, he said it has a sex scene with clothes on, so that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, that's how all when, my when sex that scenes go. Um, <clears throat> Saturday around 11, I think. Oh, that sounds like fun. So, should be fun. Um, I don't know. What are we doing Saturday night? I have no idea. Nothing. I'm not there. Oh, you're not there. Oh, room. this is going to be the Saturday stream then. I forgot I was doing that. Yeah. Um, until then... Have a great week, and we will see you all next week. Bye. Bye.